Welcome back to Unraveling Human Physiology, where we try to make physiology easy for you to understand. Today, we are going to talk about buffers. pH buffers are crucial for the regulation of body pH. But what is a pH buffer? A pH buffer is any substance that can bind in a reversible way to hydrogen ions and resist better than water at changing pH. So here's a key point, remember, buffers are the first defense of the body when something is trying to change body pH. The most important buffer in the body are the carbonate, hemoglobin, phosphate, and proteins. Let's start by the carbon dioxide bicarbonate buffer. You will find this buffer all around the body. In the overall reaction, carbon dioxide reacts with water to give hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. For this reaction, you need the action of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Remember that enzymes are proteins that make reaction go faster. Carbonic anhydrase reacts in two steps. In the first step, water split to form hoxidryl and hydrogen ion. Next, hoxidryl reacts with carbon dioxide to form bicarbonate. Then, bicarbonate and hydrogen combine to form carbonic acid. Henderson Hasselbach equation help us understand the relation between pH and the components of a buffering system. So, pH equals pKa of the buffering system plus the logarithm of the concentration of the base in the buffering system divided the concentration of the acid in the buffering system. For carbon dioxide bicarbonate buffer, the pKa of the buffer is 6.1. The concentration of the base is the concentration of bicarbonate, and the concentration of the acid is the concentration of carbon dioxide. But carbon dioxide is a gas, so what we measure in blood is the pressure of carbon dioxide. To transform this pressure of carbon dioxide in milliequivalent per liter of carbon dioxide, we use this constant. If we add an acid to the solution, the reaction will shift to form more carbon dioxide. This will lower the concentration of bicarbonate and rise the pressure of carbon dioxide. The contrary will happen if we add a base. Then carbon dioxide will react, the reaction will shift to form bicarbonate, and then the pressure of carbon dioxide will lower and the concentration of bicarbonate will rise. In normal physiological conditions, the concentration of bicarbonate is 24 milliequivalent per liter, and the pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 mercury millimeters. If we replace this in the equation, that gives us 7.4, which is normal pH for the body. Remember this key point. Carbon dioxide bicarbonate buffer is crucial for the body because we can regulate it in two ways. Carbon dioxide pressure is regulated in the lungs. Bicarbonate concentration is regulated in the kidneys. Another important buffer is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the principal protein of red blood cells. It's an iron protein that gives red blood cells its red color. Its main function is to transport oxygen, so we can find oxyhemoglobin when it's bind to oxygen and desoxyhemoglobin when it's not bind to oxygen. As a protein, it can bind protons and act as a buffer simply by binding or not protons. Interestingly, oxygen changes the capacity of hemoglobin to bind protons. When oxygen is bind to hemoglobin, the pKa of the reaction is 6.95. Look at the graphic of the ratio of base and acid forms of the buffer. You will see the pKa of this reaction and physiological pH, which is 7.4. In this part, 7.4 is higher than pKa. That means that the majority of oxyhemoglobin will be in the base form. Another interesting property of oxyhemoglobin is that Oxygen is loose easier if it is in the acidic form. When oxygen is not bound to hemoglobin, the pKa of the reaction is higher, 8.2.
look in this graphic, the pKa, which is higher than physiological pH, that means that the majority of the SOX hemoglobin will be in the acidic form. So how all these reactions with hemoglobin work in a body? We'll talk first about tissue blood capillar where carbon dioxide is high because cells in the surround are performing aerobic glycolysis. Carbon dioxide will enter the cell easily and then will react with an intracellular carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid will split to form bicarbonate and protons. Bicarbonate leaves the cell through a transporter and protons acidify the cell. So in this graphic, we will go from 7.4 to an acidic pH. So both for oxyhemoglobin and the hemoglobin, the acidic form will be the preferred form. The first one to react will be the hemoglobin because its pKa is higher. And then oxyhemoglobin will, so will also react to form a protonate form of oxyhemoglobin. In this way, pH is buffered. Another thing that happens is that oxyhemoglobin in the acidic form loses oxygen easier. So oxygen will leave hemoglobin and exit the cell because it is a gas. In this way, oxygen will reach the tissues. In the lung blood capillar, as the lung eliminate carbon dioxide from the cell, the concentration of carbon dioxide will be very low. So carbon dioxide will leave red blood cell and the reaction will be the contrary of the ones we see in a tissue blood capillar. Then the concentration of protons will lower and pH will rise. In the graphic will be in this part. Look that in this part both pro the oxyhemoglobin and the desoxyhemoglobin, the basic form of the buffer is a preferred form. So they both will react to form the basic form. Remember that oxygen has more affinity for hemoglobin when it is in the base form. So another thing that will happen is that oxygen will combine with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. So in this way, in the lungs, you eliminate carbon dioxide and you have a way to transport oxygen through the body. So here's a key point. In tissue blood capillaries, carbon dioxide enters red blood cells, oxygen leaves red blood cells, and the preferred form of hemoglobin is the hemoglobin in the acidic form. On lung blood capillaries, however, carbon dioxide leaves red blood cells, oxygen enter red blood cells, and the preferred form of hemoglobin is oxyhemoglobin in the basic form. Phosphat is an extracellular buffer. It has two protons, so we have phosphat as a diacid or a monoacid or the basic form. But the most common forms of phosphat are the diacid and the monoacid. The pKa of this reaction is 6.8 which is closer to 7.4 and one could think that then it's a better buffer than carbon dioxide bicarbonate. But there is more carbon dioxide bicarbonate than phosphate in extracellular fluid, then the buffering capacity of phosphate is less than the one of bicarbonate. Finally, we have proteins. Every protein has an acidic form and a base form. But remember that the pKa of a protein buffer depends on its amino acid composition. So here's another key point. Remember that if you can synthesize blood proteins, the capacity of the blood to buffer pH change will lower. But what happens if all the buffers coexist in the same system? The isoidric principle states that if pH change, all the equilibriums of all the buffering systems will change. For example, a pH will change the concentration of bicarbonate and carbon dioxide, and then will also change the concentration of the monoacid and the diacid form of phosphate. 
and will change the composition of the acid and the base form of the protein and the composition of the base and the acid form of hemoglobin and so on. If you want to estimate the buffering capacity of a patient, you can calculate the base buffer. The base buffer is the sum of all the anions that can bind to proton and act as a buffer. Remember in blood that will be the concentration of bicarbonate, fosphate, proteins and hemoglobin. And if it is normal, it should be more or less 50 milliequivalent per liter. You can also calculate the difference between the base buffer you measure in a patient and the normal base buffer, and that should give you more or less 2.3 milliequivalent per liter. If you measure more than 2.3 milliequivalent per liter, that means that your patient has an excess of base buffer. That can be, for example, in some alkalosis. If your patient has less than 2.3 milliequivalent per liter, that means that your patient lacks base buffer, and that happens in some acidosis. Summing up this video, I can say that buffers are any substance that can bind in a reversible way to hydrogen ions and resist better than water at changing pH. In the body, buffers are the first line of defense they act in seconds when there's a change in acid-base status. The most important buffers in the body are bicarbonate, hemoglobin, fosphate, and proteins. So give me a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for see my next videos. Bye.